You are listening now to A Word of Faith with Bishop Macedo. Thanks be to God. May the Spirit of the Most High be with you, my dear listener. And He may open your understanding for you to understand His words. He may open your understanding so that you may comprehend and understand His will for your life. For the Holy Scripture says that milk is a deck. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought bread and wine. Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought bread and wine. And he was a priest of the Most High God. So let us speak about Melchizedek today. Because you will understand why he came to meet Abraham and bless him. The Bible says that Melchizedek, he did not have parents. We do not know the beginning of Melchizedek. We know he is a king. And Salem was a land of peace, it is the, the city of Jerusalem. And he brought bread and wine, and he was a priest of God Most High. What does this have to do with me today, Bishop? You may ask. I have the understanding that Melchizedek, he was the king of Salem, and he brought bread and wine to Abraham. And Melchizedek, he was a priest of the Most High. So let me tell you this. Everything that happened in the past, everything that happened in the history of the people of Israel, the people of God, it repeats today. The same fights that the people of Israel faced in the Old Testament, we face in our days. The same evil spirits that betrays and was against the people of Israel, they continue active in this earth to destroy God's people, to erase the memory of God's memory in the face of the earth, because that's the objective of evil. But God, in His infinite mercy and wisdom and power, He sent Melchizedek, a priest of the God Most High, symbolizing and representing the Most High, because Melchizedek, he, in the end, he was Jesus. He was Jesus, or a type, or an example of the Lord Jesus in the New Testament. Because Jesus, he became the High Priest. High priest, meaning the one who is supreme to the ones who believe in him. Melchizedek, he was a priest of the Most High, of those who were of God, and God had sent him to bring bread and wine. And you know what's the meaning of bread and wine, because it symbolizes the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus. So Melchizedek represented bread, bread and wine, symbolizing Jesus, so that he could bless Abraham. But the question comes, Bishop, how can Melchizedek came to Abraham to bless Abraham 
If Abraham was the blessing himself, if Abraham was already blessed by God Most High, so then why did Melchizedek come to bless Abraham? He did not go to bless Abraham, my dear listener. He did not only go to bless or to confirm or to seal Abraham's blessing. He went so that Abraham could recognize, so that Abraham could recognize him as the servant of God Most High, and then to be able to give him the tithes of the victory that Abraham had have had from the enemies. So that was actually the reason why Melchizedek came and met with Abraham. Because there were no high priests in that time. Abraham was called, but there was no high priest or a figure of a priest of God. And you know that a priest symbolizes the one who enters in God's presence and sacrifices to God and enters in God's presence to on behalf of himself as well as the people who serve God. So the priest is actually the one who comes in God's presence to make sacrifice that comes before God's presence on the altar and sacrifice to God because the altar is a place of sacrifice. The altar represents God and whoever goes on the altar is to sacrifice. Is to sacrifice. So you cannot go on the altar if you are not emerged with the spirit of a priest. And Melchizedek was a first priest. And he brought bread and wine and gave to Abraham. He did that because he was a representative of God. He symbolized God most high. And when Jesus came, he became the high priest. Jesus is the high priest. He is the high priest who intercedes the God the Father to those who believe in him. And not only that, but he, our Lord Jesus, he became he became the one who brings to his people bread and wine so that these people may be also priests before him. So, that in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, says that Jesus chose us as royal priesthood, a royal priesthood, not a, a kingdom of just people or members. No, no. A royal priesthood. A royal priesthood, meaning God, he only has the priests. So you who are listening to me right now, and you who believe in Jesus, you are a type of priest of the Most High. You are a priest because of our Lord Jesus. Because Jesus is the high priest. He is the highest, the one above. He couldn't be a high priest if there were no priests or inferior under him. So we are under him. So you can see, my dear listener, that you must know these facts because the facts of the past is here in, in the present. So when Melchizedek went to meet Abraham, so then Melchizedek told Abraham like this, the Bible says like this, that he blessed Abraham. He blessed Abraham and made Abraham also a high priest. It's another priest. Blessed Abraham. He blessed Abraham and said, 
Blessed be Abram by God Most High. Meaning, Melquisedec went to meet Abraham to bless him and to firm him as a priest. Saying, blessed be Abraham by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. Bendito seja Abraão. Blessed be Bendito Abraham. Abraão. Blessed be Abraham. Pelo Deus Altíssimo. By God Most diz, High. And then he said, seja Blessed Deus be God Most High, who has delivered your glória. enemies into your hands. Aqui, referring Abraão. to Abraham. Quer dizer, so, Melchizedek, Melchizedek bendice blessed Abraão. Abraham. Ele fez he made sure that Abraham would be blessed so that he could also be a priest of God Most High, so that Abraham could then be able to do the work of a priest and to take his generation, the idea of worship to God. And when Jesus came, Jesus came through Abraham. And you know it. So when Jesus came, he became the high priest. Jesus became the high priest. The high priest from who? Or for who? Of the priests that he had gained to his father, the God Most High. So Abraham, he was blessed as a priest just as Melchizedek, so that he could bless his generation, so that he could have authority to bless Isaac as well as Israel. So you can see, Melchizedek blessed Abraham, Abraham blessed Isaac, and Isaac blessed who? Blessed Jacob, who later on became Israel. And Israel blessed their children. So, bless, the blessing from Melchizedek was being passed on in hand, in hand to those who would come and inherit salvation, eternal salvation. So then, Abraham, considering Melchizedek as a priest, of God Most High, then Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. So, my dear listener, when we, when we, when we become tithers, when all of us become tithers, we become priests. Just the priest just the priest is capable to offer God the tithe of everything, the first fruit of everything. And why so? Because they consider God the most high. And his son, their high priest, meaning their intercessor, the one who offers, who pleads permanently to the Father, prayers to intercede, sacrifices to intercede in order for the people for those who have been placing their lives in their hands, those that have been obeying his words. So it's important for you to know this, my dear listener. You may remember when Jesus said to his disciples, look, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creatures. Who believes and is baptized will be saved. What is the meaning to be saved? means that they will be a priest of God. Although they may be small, but they will be. 
when they put their life in a practical way. Not in, a, not in theology, no. Because you see many people that they say they are believers, but they don't practice the word of God. They don't obey God's word. They say they believe in God. They believe in Jesus because they learn this in their church. They learn this in the Bible school. So they learned and they believe. They believe that they are of God. And that's why they give themselves the pleasure of not obeying the word because they already call themselves divine. I'm holy. I'm already of God. I already believe and I'm already a priest of God Most High. But in reality, the high priest or the priest is the one that goes on the altar and maintains on the altar sacrificing. Because they are to sacrifice. It's not a matter of giving offerings. It's sacrifice of their life. I remember that the priest, the high priest, in the time of Moses, in Moses' time, the high priest, the first they would make sacrifices of themselves, of their life, to be purified in order to enter the Holy of Holies. And then, after that, they would take with them the tribes, the twelve tribes of Israel. So, he was a symbol of the Lord Jesus to enter the Holy of Holies, to sacrifice once a year on behalf of the tribe of Israel. So, the same principle applies today. When a person places their life on the altar, on God's altar, it is obvious that they are renouncing, denying their personal life. They are denying themselves. They are putting aside every, everyone, any family member, in first in their life. Is what Jesus confirms by saying that whoever loves their father or mother is not worthy of me. Whoever loves your children more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever loves their brother, sister more than I, you're not worthy of me. I must be first. So God is first, Jesus is first, because he is the high priest and he gives us the right to come before the Father. Through the Lord Jesus, who is the high priest, we have the right access to God's presence. And obviously, through the Lord Jesus, we are priests. We are a kingdom, we are priesthood, a royal priesthood of the Most High. But this is all due to Melchizedek and Abraham. Melchizedek, who was the king of Salem, meaning the, the king, the kingdom of peace, presented bread and wine to Abraham. And he was a priest of God Most High. Abraham, obviously, he had this discernment to understand that Melchizedek was not just anybody that came to meet him along the way because he overcame the battles that he won of the kingdom he had taken his nephew. No, 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 no. no. When Abraham saw Melchizedek, he saw someone different. He saw someone that was different. He did not see a person that was just dressed in royal robes. No, he saw someone that was different, like a, like a light that was shining in his face. So, dear listener, this is how each priest of God's Most High has to be. You are listening to me right now and you believe in Jesus, but when you pray, you are exercising your right of priest. 
sacerdote. You are being a priest. When you pray for someone, when you cry out on behalf of someone, you are exercising the official as a priest before God. So you are a priest. But if you are a priest and obey God's word, then you are accepted by God. But if you are a priest that does not, you do not sacrifice, you simply don't obey God's word, so then you are similar to those bad priests that God speaks about there in the book of Malachi. You are a bad priest, priests that God said, I will judge your sacrifices as excrements on your face. So, God, He does not accept the priests that is unfaithful, rebellious, disobedient. He does not accept. So, this kind of priest, unfaithful, disobedient, that has be insulting God due to their behaviors, their actions, due to their bad character before God, a bad testimony, he, they offend God. And, unfortunately, they think, they believe that they are believers. They, they, they believe they should enter in God's presence like the others. No way. Because The priest is a symbol. It's a reflection of the high priest. So the high priest is holy. Is the holy of holies. And the priests, the priests that are his, the beginning of him, they must be holy. So, my dear listener, see what kind of responsibility I have and all of us have within of God's kingdom. So the priest has the right and privilege and obligation to save those that are lost in this world. Is the priest that goes to those that are hurt, suffering, to take bread, bring bread and wine to them, to bring them to Jesus. It is the priest that goes to those that are afflicted to bless them. It is the priest's duty to go to the ones that are desperate, to say to them, God's hand is not short to help you, and not even deaf his ears to hear your voice. It's the priest's duty. We are going to continue talking more about this topic in our next message. Just the way you came to David Come and pour on to me The same oil anointed by your presence And make me just as you are We've gone in some honor. I want to seek your presence, Father. Come and anoint my offering of love. I give
just the way you came to David. Make of me a 